Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Tavion and his family, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you for amplifying their voices in the community and amplifying the true narrative of what is happening to black boys and girls in this city. But really, we shouldn't be here today. We shouldn't have to be telling this story. We shouldn't have to be demanding more justice and accountability. It's sad that 69 years after the murder of Emmett Till, we are still here, out here, demanding justice for black lives. It's sad that 10 years after the murder of Tamir Rice, we are still here pleading for the police department to see the humanity in our black boys. It's sad that after the murder of Jalen Walker, Patrick King, Charles Hicks, Elijah Cade, and so many others that this police department, mayor after mayor after mayor, keeps seeing an increase in funds to continue terrorizing our communities. When will enough be enough? When will no justice, no peace actually mean something? I consider it a privilege to carry on the tradition of radical black lawyering in this country to carry on the tradition of fighting for the freedom and humanity of black people in this country, to speak truth to power and be unapologetic in this fight. I consider it a privilege to use my voice to stand alongside Tavion and his family in demanding justice and accountability, demanding this community and this police department see the humanity in Tavion and the countless other black kids in this city who just want to be free free to live a full, healthy, and safe life, free to walk to their grandmother's home and not worried about being shot down by someone who is supposed to protect and serve, shot down by a member of a slave patrol turned police department. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired, but rest assured, this struggle will continue. Tavion and his family will get justice, and our people will organize, and we will get free. Today, we have a list of demands. We expect Mayor Malik, Chief Harding, Akron City Council, and the Department of Justice to move swiftly and expeditiously on these demands for the sake of black life. We demand that Ryan Westlake be immediately terminated from the Akron Police Department. It's come to our attention that Westlake was also found to have improperly used his taser against an Akron resident. This was not included in the personnel file released by the city of Akron. And so we demand the city of Akron release the entire personnel file for Westlake. We demand the city of Akron conduct an investigation into the officers with a pattern and history of violations of department policies and procedures and terminate officers not fit to be in the department. We demand that city council develop an accountability mechanism for the fraternal order of police when the union has time and time again supported problematic officers and that officer continues to harm members of our community, the FOP needs to be held responsible. We demand that the Attorney General's office conduct a thorough investigation and present an honest, fair, and just case to the grand jury to bring criminal charges against this officer. We demand the Department of Justice open a pattern and practice investigation into the Akron Police Department to push this city and this police department to treat people in this city with dignity and humanity. We know that power concedes nothing without a demand. So there you have it. Next, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from Angel Williams, the mother of Tavion. <laughs> I really didn't know what I was going to get up here and say. Um, I prayed on it. I asked God to be with me and keep my vibration high. Um, this experience has been very, very traumatizing for me, my son, my family, and also my other children. Um, what has happened has not been the first time have this has happened and it won't be the last. Akron Police Department needs to be held accountable for the excessive force that you use on our black babies. It is not okay. And we are sick and tired of watching our babies die 
in the hands of people who swore an oath to protect and serve, it has to stop. Because then it won't just be my child, it'll be yours next. And it won't be, it won't stop. It won't stop until we make it stop. Akron Police Department is only going to do what we allow them to do. I won't allow it no more. So when I get up here and I speak, I don't just speak for Tavion. I speak for all the little black and brown boys and girls around the world, not just Tavion, because it don't end with him. And I need, I'm sorry, but I need all of the white people to really listen to this because the racism that has been embedded in this system that you guys reap the benefits from is frustrating. 10 years later after Tamir Rice, and I'm here speaking about my son, I watched his mother speak about her son, and now I'm standing up here doing the same thing. It has to stop, and we will put a stop to it. And that's all I have to say. Next, we're gonna have an opportunity to hear from James Coons, father. First, I just wanna thank y'all for being here. I'm James Coons, the father of Tavion Coons. Um, I just want to say I'm saddened by what took place April 1st, 2024. My son was shot after he put down the toy gun while his hands was already in the air, as he clearly was saying that the gun he threw down was fake. He was immediately shot by the police. Only one question, with only one question being asked, why I am grateful to God that he, is, he was only shot once in his wrist. I can only help but wonder what would have or could have happened. And I am grateful to God that my son is still alive. But I am deeply hurt by the trauma that this has caused that will forever affect his life. He has lost sleep behind this incident. He has been afraid and anxious staying up late at night and waking up, the, waking up multiple times throughout the night. He has a scar that will now be cons a consistent reminder of the trauma he has faced that day. It is my hope that justice will be served for my son, that justice will be, that justice will be served for many of, of our other black young men that tend to grow up and become labeled as a threat in our society. I just ask that you all keep us in your prayers during this time. Thank you. Next, we're gonna hear from Dominique Mingo. Tavion's on. Um, it isn't much that we can say that everybody hasn't already said. Um, as far as my sister, I can't imagine what she went through to be in the actual position that a lot of us walk out and we face every day, just to walk down to your grandmother's house and to be scared if you're gonna get a bad phone call. I just think it's time that not only Akron police, but all police give us longer than one second. Give us longer than one second to think that we're innocent. We get that first, not last. We're innocent first. Next, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from the president of the Akron chapter of the NAACP, Judy Hill. First, I want to say um, to the family members, I'm sorry that you're going through this. Two years ago, on Friday, we had another press conference about another young man getting shot. We thought we were making progress. We thought that we would not have to have another press conference 
and it's another situation very similar. We thought that we were working with our city and our police department to make some changes. And I'm sorry that we didn't make enough. So today we're having another press conference about another young black male being shot. So some of the same emotions are surfacing. Um, I guess I want to say we are blessed that he is here with us today. But for some reason when I read the comments online, and I don't usually do that, um, but I'm disturbed by some of the reactions. So when I think about the situation and I, I look at the body cam footage, um, there were no reports of any shots fired. There was no report of a home being damaged. There was no report of any gang or large groups of individuals or youth. There was no perceived threat. There was no loud music, no cursing. I'm trying to figure this out. There was no disobedience. There was a man walking down the street. You don't know his age. You don't know anything about him except his color. So for me, officers are trained to assess the situation. In the video, at no time did the young man endanger the lives of anyone on the scene. At no time in the video did the young man endanger the police officer. At no time in the video did you see that young man lunge at the officer or do anything that looked threatening. At no time in the video did that young man say anything that looked like he was threatening. But what we did see in the video was the officer pull up, see him verbalize something to the young man, and before he could completely stop his car, he shot and fired. Now, folks, I believe that the officer deserved the right to go home to his family. I believe that young man deserved the right to go home to his grandmother and to his family. I believe that. But when you don't have the opportunity to do that, then there's something wrong. So the individuals online who make comments and say, you know what, he should not have done that. He should not, he should not. I agree. He shouldn't have had a toy gun. But an officer who was trained to assess a situation, who was an adult, and is trained, I'm going to keep saying that, should not have shot a 14-year-old child. Now, at the time of the situation, he didn't know he was a 14-year-old. He had no idea. But what he did know, he was a young person walking alone with what was perceived to be a weapon in his hand. But at no time did he allow to assess a situation based on his training, if that is a part of his training. So it goes back to something we said two years ago. Akron needs to have an investigation of a pattern of practice investigation. We are still at the same place doing the same thing at the same situation when it comes to our black and brown children. It's got to stop. Just recently, the city of Akron is in the process of selecting a new police chief. And the interim police chief is, is putting out right now um, the trainings that the officers must um, adhere to. If you get a chance, check out what they want them to do. It has nothing to do with de-escalation. It has nothing to do with um, community policing. If you get a chance, talk to an officer and find out. We're looking at more police brutality training instead of how do we change the narrative so that this doesn't happen again. Thank you. And last, we'll have an opportunity to hear from the executive director of the Freedom Bloc, Ray Green. Good morning, team. Uh, first of all, my heart goes out to this family as we continue to work through another tragic police shooting in our community. Um, heart goes out to all of the black community that has to continue to relive this, this drama. Um, every time we turn on our TVs, someone that looks like us is being shot, um, sometimes being killed with the government resources. 
that we provide through our taxes. Um, so my heart goes out to the city of Akron uh, and black people worldwide right now. Um, I'm here to state that it, it can no longer be business as usual. We can no longer continue to do this. We can, can no longer continue to put money into a police force, into the system, system of policing that continues to hurt, maim, and kill our citizens, particularly our black citizens. What world are we living in where police brutality and police murder can be labeled as a mistake or God forget, God forbid, I fear for my life. I believe the only people that are fearing for their lives are the little boys that's walking around with toy guns. I believe the people that are fear for their life are the people that are living in poverty in conditions that make them do whatever they gotta do to survive. I believe those are the people that are really scared for their lives. So I stand today asking you, what is freedom? If you act free in America as a black person, you are killed by the police. If you practice freedom of speech as a black person in America, you get beat up by police. If you wanna take a nap on your couch as a black person in America, you get killed by police. If you are a black child playing with a gun, a toy gun that they sell in stores, you have the propensity to be killed by police. At 15 years old, how do you grasp the magnitude of a world who kills children for being children? We will not continue to use language that demonize this child. We will not continue to use language that put this child's parents at fault. He was shot for carrying a toy gun in a state where open and carry is legal. He was shot by the police for carrying a toy gun in a state where open and carry is legal. It was a toy. We're not gonna use words like facsimiles and all these other words that we want to use to paint this pretty picture of why a police is able to shoot a 15-year-old kid. It was a toy gun, period, end of story. I have lived in this city all my life. I have watched white men walk down the street with loaded AR-15s and never be questioned, let alone shot. This young man was walking down the street with a toy gun and now his life has changed for forever. Some say at least he's not dead. I ask you, have you talked to a 15 year old that was full of life with a bright future and then talk to that same 15 year old child after being shot by the police? He may be breathing, he may be talking, he may be walking, but his life is forever changed. Trauma has taken over his life. The inability to close his eyes without seeing visions of himself being shot is not being alive. I am hungry. I am thirsty to figure out what freedom is. Because this is not it. This movie that we are participating in is not what freedom looks like, nor is it what freedom feels like. So how do we move the margins of freedom in the age of poverty and inhumane conditions? How do we move the needle of freedom in a city where our budget for the police is 10 times more than the budget for housing, education, and prevention? Budgets are a moral document. And our document says that we sanction police harassing and killing black people. Memphis has shown us how to hold officers accountable by terminating the five black officers beat it up Tyree Nichols. Now it's time for Akron City Council, Akron's mayor, and Akron's acting police chief to fire Ryan Westlake again. We are calling once again for a pattern of practice investigation by the Department of Justice into the Akron Police Department. 
We demand that Ryan Westlake be immediately terminated again from the Akron Police Department. We demand an explanation from the mayor as to why this officer was reinstated. We demand that the city of Akron conduct an investigation to officers with pattern and history of violations to the department policies and procedures and terminate officers not fit to be carrying a badge. We demand the city council develop an accountability mechanism for the fraternal order of police. We demand the attorney general's office conduct a thorough investigation and present an honest, fair, and just case to the grand jury to bring criminal charges. We demand the Department of Justice to open up a pattern of practice investigation. We demand the Department of Justice to open up a pattern of practice investigation. And ultimately, we demand that all black people in the city of Akron be treated with the humanity, the dignity, and the respect that we deserve. Thank you. Know that we will continue to struggle until freedom. Until black boys and girls and black people in this city and across this country are treated with the dignity and humanity that they deserve. I want you all to know, and I want Westlake, Shamus Malik, Harding, and the entire city government to know that Tabion, his family, the Okolo Law Firm, and everyone standing behind us are coming for justice, are coming for accountability, and we will not rest until it comes, until freedom. At this time, I'll take a couple of questions from folks out in the audience. Can you go back to the day he was walking to his grandmother's? What has Tavion told you about what he was doing? Where did he get the toy gun? And did he ever point it at officers? On April 1st, Tavion was being a kid. He was being a kid walking down the street with a toy, going to his grandmother's house. For Tavion, this was just a normal, regular day. But unfortunately for Tavion, Tavion can't be a black kid walking down the street with a toy because someone called and said, oh, he's pointing it around. Oh, he's pointing it at houses. And she didn't even call 911. She called the non-emergency line because even she didn't believe it was an emergency. And despite all of that, despite Tavion just being a kid walking down the street, Officer Westlake pulled up and before he even got out of that vehicle, he shot at Tavion. He shot at Tavion as Tavion was putting the gun on the ground and having his hands up. Tavion did everything he could in this situation to be safe. There was nothing Tavion could have done differently. Uh, Dad mentioned the, the mental impact of this. Is Tavion able to go back to school yet? Or, uh, this is extremely traumatizing. It's traumatizing for individuals just watching this on TV, let alone individuals who are there and experiencing it who was shot. Tavion struggled. There's no way to explain that struggle. There's no way to explain the mental toll that that has on a 15-year-old kid. To recognize at this age that this city, folks don't believe that you're human. And so he's struggling. He's traumatized. It's going to take so much time, therapy, to figure out any sense of normal, any sense of how to be a 15-year-old black kid in this country. My heart goes out to Tavion because I can't imagine how you deal with something like this. One other question. After the Jalen Walker killing, uh, the city organized the Citizens Police Oversight Board. Has that played a role in this? Have you all been in contact with them? What can they do in this situation? Can they? Do anything in this you know, it's no question that we've seen some struggles with our civilian review board here in Akron and the new creation of this review board and, and the struggles of them conducting rules and figuring out how they're going to operate. Now, at this point, they don't have the investigative powers that allow them to step in at this point, but we certainly expect them to conduct an investigation once the, uh, the state as well as the city has conducted theirs. Will Tavion have any lasting um, uh, health problems? Beyond that, is his hand damaged permanently? His hand is not damaged permanently, but for the rest of his life, he will have some strain from what's going on here. 
he will have some injury for the rest of his life from what he had to go through. He will always be injured from this. Um, in the body camera footage, he mentioned that he was coming back from his cousin's funeral. Um, who's his cousin and um, how did he die? More information will be coming out about who his cousin is and what happened, but his cousin died from being shot. Um, why do you think the city named the officer who shot Tavion, but have not named the officers who shot Jalen Walker? You know, I think a lot of it is, you know, this continuation of trying to cover themselves. I think the police department knew that this officer, the mayor knew this officer was a problem, and they have to get out in front of it. Because there's no reason this officer should have been on the department. There's no reason you get fired from a police department and then get reinstated the very next day. How can you have a letter go out that says you're unfit to be a member of the Akron Police Department and that very next day you're reinstated? It absolutely makes no sense. This city understands that we have a pattern and practice of black people, black boys and girls being traumatized and being terrorized by this Akron Police Department. And they need to do something. And simply putting out his personnel file, one that's not even full, is not enough. They need to fire this officer. I need an explanation as to why he's even on the department to begin with. Can you share more about the personnel file that you said is not full? I know you mentioned his use of a taser. Can you just go in more detail about that? So there is an incident, a use of force incident, where this officer tased someone unjustly. Another officer even tried to stop him from tasing this individual for absolutely no reason. Officers were trying to help this individual get out of a vehicle, and Officer Westlake comes up and tases this individual. Even the department found it unjustified. The Fraternal Order of Police, I'm sure, found it unjustified. Why is he here? More information about that will be coming out. We will certainly be free to, uh, to put out the use of force investigation report as well as what Westlake put in his use of force report. Thank you. A police from the city reached out to the family in the last two weeks. So the family has had an opportunity, obviously, to see the video upon our request before it came out into the media. Shama Smalik has not reached out to myself, has not reached out to the family. Um, the chief of police has not reached out to myself, has not reached out to the family. We know how they feel. And can you describe after the body camera video ends? Is Tavion going to be custody? What happens? Obviously, he's taken to the hospital at some point. Can you describe when he's actually able to go back to his family? Yes, so Tavion was taken to the hospital, and by the grace of God, he was able to return to his family not too, too long after. So he was never like put in custody, police custody? No, he was not necessarily put in police custody. Obviously, you see Officer Westlake put handcuffs around his wrist after just being shot. That makes no sense. But we were told as the family is watching this video, watching their son be gunned down by the Akron Police Department, that their son could be charged with having a facsimile. Do you know if those charges are being considered right now? When I asked the chief of police to his face, will you be charging Tavion with a criminal act? He said they're working with the prosecutor's office to try to figure out if they're going to charge him. And if they do charge him, it's going to be with having a facsimile. It's completely unjustified. It makes absolutely no sense. It's another tactic that we see for this police department to continue to cover themselves, to continue to try to justify these acts. Have they said how quickly that decision will be made? No. Can you talk a little bit more about the demand for an accountability mechanism for the FOP, like what that could look like? You know, um, a little while back, uh, former Councilman Russ Neal brought some legislation to the floor to try to have the FOP be held accountable in situations like this, in situations in which an officer had a pattern and practice of violating office, the department's policies and procedures, and that if this FOP was to continue to advocate for these officers, that they should be held responsible and accountable if those officers continue to go out and terrorize our community. Just as a Clarification, I know Judy said 14, but it's Tavion 15. Yes, Tavion's 15 years old. 15. Okay. Is the family planning to sue the city and the Akron Police Department? Yes. <laughs> That's what happens in this situation. Unfortunately, in this country, the only way that this family can affirmatively reach justice is a civil lawsuit. Unfortunately, this family does not have the option to affirmatively bring criminal charges. Unfortunately, it's not up to this family to be able to go in front of this grand jury and tell them exactly what happened to their son. 
It's unfortunate that Tavion will not be able to go in front of this grand jury and tell them what happened to him, how it happened, and how sick and tired we are of it happening in this community. So thank you. We appreciate all you all coming out. Last question. Left or right hand, I know when we walked in, TV, I know he's not gonna speak. Could you show us uh, the wound just to... There's no need to, thank no, you. No, I just mean the cast. Right? There's no need to, thank you. Okay. And with that, we appreciate you all coming. We appreciate you all amplifying the voices of this family and the voices of Tavion. Thank you.